Okay, so uh, yeah, let's just get going. So uh, today's seminar's topic is uh, basically how to build a career in Japan. And uh, I will be talking about kind of various aspects of build building a career in Japan uh, from the point of view of uh, graduates from uh, the Nagoya University International G30 program. Um, yes. So uh, here are some of the uh, topics for today. So uh, these are kind of the steps you need to take if you want to succeed in uh, uh, building a career after graduating from a Japanese university. Um, so like, uh, 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 like the first step is somehow to know your enemy. So what I mean by that is that uh, before you come to Japan and you uh, start studying in Japan or want to pursue a career in Japan, I think it's good to research a little bit about uh, working life in Japan and kind of get an understanding of uh, what the working conditions here might be. And then step two to succeeding is to be educated. So um, in Japan to have kind of an interesting career, it's uh, really quite important to have at least a, a bachelor's degree. So having a bachelor's degree uh, will open doors to uh, many different types of jobs. And uh, here at Nagoya University, uh, we offer uh, 10 uh, international programs uh, in the G30 program taught completely in English. So in this section, I will give a brief introduction of our program as well and uh, what it offers for you in terms of uh, like career and internships and kind of career support, things like that. Uh, then the third step to uh, succeed is somehow to find your passion. So Perhaps in the past, it uh, used to be enough just to graduate from a university. And after that, you could kind of figure out, okay, what am I going to do in the world? But uh, uh, nowadays, globally, and also in Japan, uh, it's kind of important to start building your career already when you're in university. And uh, a really uh, good way of doing that is kind of finding something you're passionate about, something that you want to pursue when you're a student, even if you don't get uh, paid too much for it. So uh, uh, yeah, I will I will talk a little bit, give some a few examples of some of our students who have clearly found their passion and have turned that also into a career. And then uh, in the fourth step, uh, Hannah will talk to you. You will learn from your senpai. Uh, she can give you kind of the most up-to-date information, what it's like to study in Japan and study in the G30 program and uh, like how she uh, went about finding her uh, internship. Uh, then after that, I would like to introduce you to some of the success stories uh, from Nagoya University. So if, if you come here, then what can you expect for your future career in, in terms of perhaps going forward in academia or entering a company in Japan? And finally, uh, we have a Q&A. Q uh, so of course it's important if you don't know, ask. Um, Hannah and I, we can ask questions uh, about regarding kind of career, uh, but also uh, some general questions that you might have uh, regarding um, studying at Nagai University. So uh, that's the plan for today. So uh, let's just get started. Okay, so step one, know your enemy. So first of all, uh, I wanted to just check uh, like who's, who's actually joining this seminar today. Um, I think uh, some of you couldn't join live, so I will send you a recording uh, later on, but uh, Quite a few students are interested in automotive engineering, uh, and most students seem to be uh, interested in the undergraduate programs, uh, quite a lot of interest also for biology. Uh, and then we have also several students joining today uh, who are interested in the graduate programs. So uh, 
I think in the Q and A session there were some uh, questions about what about career after PhD. So uh, during that time, uh, I can give, tell you about my personal experience about uh, what it was like uh, looking for a job after graduating from PhD. Uh, but yeah, so welcome everybody. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions about uh, student life, uh, then Hannah can uh, answer your questions in the chat. And I think there are some uh, like admissions office staff also present who can uh, answer your kind of admissions related que questions in the chat. Yeah, but uh, let's just get started. So uh, know your enemy, what is it actually to uh, like to work in Japan. I think uh, uh, like Japanese work culture can be quite different from uh, some other countries uh, uh, working style. So uh, it's somehow good to get a basic understanding uh, before you start thinking about pursuing a career in Japan. So one thing that is really like positive and good thing about uh, uh, the Japanese working life is that uh, uh, it's very secure and safe. So uh, like historically, uh, the Japanese labor system has been based on kind of lifetime employment. So after you graduate from university and get kind of a uh, kind of a, a real adult job and not just a part-time job, then uh, often uh, uh, it's a permanent position. And traditionally, you have been able to keep that position uh, for a basically until you retire. That's like kind of the how, how it has been. Uh, the things are changing a little bit uh, nowadays. Uh, but the really nice thing is that uh, like workers' rights are strictly protected by law. So uh, it's quite, uh, uh, if you have a permanent position, then uh, it's quite difficult to like, uh, for example, fire uh, staff. So uh, that's something which I think is kind of positive about the Japanese system. Also, uh, uh, generally having a good job uh, covers your uh, health ins insurance and uh, uh, they can also, usually the company will also uh, support the people with family to some extent and uh, offer maybe health insurance to the family uh, or the government will uh, cover or give you some tax breaks if you have uh, maybe wife and children. So uh, overall, uh, the working life is quite uh, secure and safe compared to many other countries. However, uh, Japanese workplace can be quite hierarchical and regimented. Uh, and uh, uh, that's something that maybe uh, international uh, workers might find a little bit difficult. And uh, from my point of view, I think it's important to learn the system and learn to con respect the system and not kind of step outside and do something by yourself. Sometimes I hear people say, Oh, just play the gaijin card. It's okay. You you can you can somehow break the rules a little bit because you're a foreigner. But uh, I would advise everybody to not do that. Uh, like nobody might not say anything to you, but probably your career path will be. Uh, you will kind of you can't uh, advance further if you start thinking, oh, because I'm I'm a foreigner, then I have some other freedoms. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite important to learn to respect the system. Uh, the third point, which is really important, is that uh, uh, like uh, the Japanese work life is still very heavily uh, based on the Japanese language. So um, uh, knowing Japanese is one of the biggest advantages you can have if you're looking for career opportunities in Japan. Uh, however, if you have some specialized skills, uh, you can also work in English. So, for example, in my case, uh, I can somehow speak Japanese. It's not perfect, uh, but I mostly uh, work in English since I work with the international programs. Uh, but uh, this is something that uh, uh, even if you come to Nagoya University, for example, and you study in English, 
then it's really important to work also on your Japanese skills. Uh, now, uh, the fourth point I would like to make is that uh, like uh, the working life in Japan and kind of the image that uh, people have abroad is, is quite uh, full of misconceptions. Um, maybe you have heard about or you read about this kind of salaryman lifestyle where you work from like early morning to late at night and then go drinking with your boss and uh, um, like your life is just work, work, work. So I think uh, in this presentation, I would like to assure you that that is not the case. I maybe at most workplaces anymore. Uh, Japan has put, it used to be like that, but Japan has put a lot of emphasis on uh, trying to help people maintain a life work balance and uh, kind of accommodate to different kinds of working styles and lifestyles and family situations. So, uh, for example, uh, Nagoya University, where I work, obviously, um, it it allows uh, uh, people with small children to work sh shorter hours uh, or maybe a fewer days in a week. So there's a big labor shortage in Japan. Uh, a lot of opportunity for work. Uh, so many companies are providing kind of more flexible working styles. Maybe you can work from home, things like that. So uh, kind of the, uh, we call the bubble bubble era J Japan, uh, kind of the really tough working culture that used to be here is, uh, is somehow easing up and uh, and it's not not what uh, you might think it is based on some uh, media outlets in general. So yeah, so for example, I'm really happy with my working situation. Uh, find that I can find a lot of balance in my life. Now, uh, saying that, uh, uh, like even though you guys probably are not yet in Japan, then something uh, I would like to emphasize is that it's still important to know your rights and read up on labor laws because uh, a lot of international uh, staff uh, might be taken advantage because they can't read the law or they are not so familiar with the law. I, I In my previous workplace, I have that kind of trouble where like my boss will try to tell me something uh, which is not true and not lawful. And then uh, I, I needed to check myself and kind of I needed to advocate for myself that uh, this is not OK. You are asking something that is against the law. So, uh, yeah, even though like it's the uh, working style has become more flexible and kind of a nicer, then uh, there are still places that might try to take advantage of you. So it's really important to know your own rights. But that's just uh, a general kind of uh, very brief overview view, uh, of uh, kind of uh, my own impression of Japanese uh, uh, kind of working life. Um, yeah. Let's see, excuse me. There we go. Uh, but step two, really important, get educated. If, uh, if you want to have a professional job in Japan, you must have an education. So uh, I, of course, represent Nagoya University. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our university and what kind of opportunities our university offers for international students. So uh, just a very brief overview of our university. So uh, we are founded uh, in 1871 and we are currently one of the top national universities. So we were chosen uh, by the Japanese government to be uh, part of the kind of uh, seven uh, kind of assigned important big universities in, in Japan. Um, and uh, we offer uh, English programs in the G30 international program. Uh, this program was founded in uh, 2011. Uh, I will uh, give you a brief overview uh, of what type of programs uh, we offer in the undergraduate and graduate programs. 
And we are a really uh, large university with uh, uh, like 16 and a half thousand students uh, with uh, uh, kind of uh, two and a half thousand international students in attendance. So um, like the nice thing of being from a really big university means that you have a, a really good network of students uh, from Nagoya University already working in companies, other international students already working in uh, many Japanese companies. So um, like there's already a large alumni network that you can use when you're a student and after you graduate when you're trying to find a job. Something that's really special about Nagoya University is that we are uh, very research focused and in the past 20 years we have been awarded about uh, six Nobel Prizes, uh, mostly in the fields of chemistry and physics. So uh, like in addition to uh, being able to build kind of a career in somewhere in a company. Uh, a lot of our G30 students actually pursue a academic career. So after uh, the undergraduate degree, go on to do a master and a PhD. Uh, several of our students have become professors uh, around the world. So uh, I will give you some kind of highlights, some kind of success stories uh, at the end of this presentation. But uh, yeah, here are the 10 undergraduate programs we offer. Uh, these are four-year programs, all taught in English. We have the Japan in Asia Culture Studies program. Uh, this program uh, focuses on things like history and cinema, uh, literature, uh, like modern Japanese history, uh, and uh, graduates from uh, this program have gone into fields like uh, journalism and uh, different types of media uh, and uh, those kinds of things. Uh, then we offer uh, two social science programs, uh, one at the School of Law and another at the School of Economics. And the School of Law program, uh, I would like to emphasize, is not a program where uh, you can graduate and become like a practicing lawyer in Japan. Uh, this, uh, you, this is a social science degree and not like a practicing law degree. Uh, they focus mostly on international law and comparative law. And uh, like uh, their graduates go on to uh, work in a lot of international companies or uh, they might uh, work in a law firm but uh, not not be like a, a practicing lawyer. Several of these students have gone to law school later to become a practicing lawyer uh, doing like their masters in in, in a, a different type of law school and uh, uh, yeah uh, like uh, uh, these students often go into like um, um, uh, international or organizations, uh, um, something like uh, a lot of these students do kind of model United Nations uh, activities and things like that. Um, but yeah, then uh, we also offer um, a program in economics and uh, economics is of course a very kind of uh, uh, good wide field where you can enter a lot of different types of companies. Uh, so generally the career aspects uh, for the students from economics are really good. Then we offer uh, two uh, biological science programs, uh, one at the School of Science and one at the School of Agricultural Sciences. Uh, so the uh, the biology program at the School of Science is focused on um, the uh, kind of pure uh, pure biology, uh, very kind of basic research in like genetics or microbiology, uh, that kinds of things. Uh, whereas the biology program at the School of uh, Agricultural Sciences is focused more on uh, applied science, uh, things like biotechnology. Um, yeah, 
So uh, these students, uh, a lot of them go into graduate schools around the world, uh, but uh, some of them have also gone to work for um, like uh, uh, maybe some um, like uh, food industry companies or uh, cosmetics industry companies. Then we have automotive engineering. This program is also divided into two programs. There's the mechanical engineering program, as well as the electrical, electronic, and information engineering programs. Uh, these programs, uh, career aspects are particularly strong because uh, Nagoya, the Nagoya city area, is kind of the hub for automotive in industry in Japan, and this type of uh, technology and like air, aerospace engineering uh, technology companies, a lot of them are based in Nagoya, uh, mostly because uh, the Toyota headquarters is also located in Nagoya. So a lot of these uh, students uh, or some of them have gone on to uh, work in uh, like Toyota group companies. Uh, some of the students have also gone to work internationally for big uh, automotive companies such as Tesla. Uh, then we have the physics program at the School of Science. Uh, the physics program is very uh, heavily based on really like pure physics research. And uh, a lot of their graduates have uh, done really well uh, in academia. So gone into some of the top uh, research centers and universities around the world. I will show you some examples a bit later on. Uh, finally, we have the chemistry program at the School of Science and at the School of Engineering. So again, these are two different programs uh, where the School of Science program is kind of more focused on uh, pure chemi chemistry, like basic uh, research in chemistry, and the School of Engineering uh, program is uh, uh, more focused on applied chemistry. So yeah, these pro students also, a lot of them uh, uh, go on to further their career in research. And I also have a few examples of past graduates from these programs uh, who have done really well uh, in their career. Uh, but yeah, those are our 10 undergraduate programs. Um, uh, I would like to say a few words about our undergraduate curriculum to give you kind of an idea of uh, like what you learn in our programs and how it might help you uh, later on when you are looking uh, for job opportunities after graduation. So yeah, it's a four-year program. And uh, uh, in the first year, you need to study Japanese. So there's a Japanese class every morning in the first period. And uh, this is just to give you a basic understanding of Japanese. Japanese is not at all required when you enter the program. All courses and theses and lab work, everything is happening in English. But of course, because you live in Japan, then like all the other daily life stuff, going to shopping or bank happens in Japanese. So it's really important to know Japanese. And if you're really serious about working in Japan, then uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite important to keep studying Japanese. So even though the Japanese language courses are required or in, only during the first year, then it's it's quite important to keep uh, taking the Japanese classes all throughout your uh, uh, like four year degree. And we offer uh, different levels of Japanese so you can improve uh, each year. And there's academic Japanese and business Japanese and uh, like reaching uh, what's called N1 or N2 level at the minimum is uh, like a really important step uh, for um, um, yeah finding a job in Japan. But uh, we definitely support you guys to uh, like reach that level during your studies. Uh, then in your first year, you will take also common basic courses. Uh, so liberal arts courses, uh, at ILAS, our liberal arts center. Uh, and that means that even though you might be studying physics, you might still need to take economics courses or uh, chemistry courses or um, like history classes, things like that. And uh, 
Like the purpose of uh, asking you to do that is to give you a more balanced education. So I think a lot of students, they come and they study a lot of different things and they might find out, oh, actually, I thought my passion was like this thing, but actually I'm I'm quite interested in something else. So uh, like having a wide variety of courses, uh, I think will make you better pe prepared kind of to find what, what's your passion and also uh, to kind of have more skills when you enter the work life. Um, then in your third year, you start focusing uh, more kind of actively. You are, of course, taking like your own specialized courses throughout the four years. But uh, in the third year, you focus more on specialized courses and lab work. Um, so the really strength of Nagoya University, especially for students who are interested in research, is that we start the laboratory training during the third year. So that means you have either one and a half years or two years to kind of work on your research skills. And some of our really successful students already published papers during their uh, bachelor's degree, which is really quite unusual uh, internationally speaking. And uh, that experience in like real research, in real lab work has made our uh, students really uh, remarkably uh, successful uh, later on when building an academic career. Um, yeah. And uh, it's not written here, but uh, I wanted to mention that in Japan, uh, like job hunting actually starts in the uh, like spring of the fourth year. And uh, uh, yeah, so um, for, for G30 students, it means uh, either uh, in the middle of your third year, you should start already looking for a job or uh, latest in the middle of the fourth year. So in Japan, the system is generally that you look for a job uh, really well in, in advance uh, before graduating. I think many other countries, you wait until you graduate and then you start look for a job. Uh, but in, in Japan, it's kind of important to secure a job before graduation. Uh, because they don't like to see any gaps in your CV. So uh, I don't go into too much detail about the kind of shukatsu, the job hunting thing, because it's quite complicated. Uh, uh, if you enter our program, then uh, there will be career seminars and explanations about how to do it. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that uh, like the system is different and you have to start looking for job uh, really early. So if you need some, take some qualification exams, like the Japanese exam to get the N1 or N2 certificate, then that has to happen already in the second or early third year. Good. So about the uh, graduate programs, I think there are a lot of graduate programs, so I won't go into too much detail. You can find these on our website. Um, uh, here you can see we offer this M stands for master program and uh, uh, D stands for doctoral program. So some some programs you can do like bachelor, master and doctoral degree in English at Nagoya University. Um, and I think it's quite uh, also a big advantage of Nagoya University that we offer both bachelor and master. So uh, if you're really serious about research, then you can stay in the same research group for a long time and kind of develop your skills to a higher level. Uh, one thing I want to mention about the graduate programs is that uh, we do offer a, a medical science doctoral program, but same as with the uh, law program, uh, this is not a program uh, which prepares you to become a practicing doctor in Japan. Um, uh, you can do that at Nagoya University in the Japanese language program, but not in the English language program, because uh, for the to become a like a practicing medical doctor in Japan, uh, there are very difficult, strict qualifying exams which you need to take in Japanese. So. Um, 
uh, yeah, the English program doesn't uh, prepare you for that. So uh, we get a lot of uh, questions and requests. Can I study medicine in, in, in English in Japan? And currently, I don't know any program which uh, offers like a degree that allows you to become a practicing uh, doctor. Our uh, This uh, PhD program for medicine focuses on medical research. Uh, and it happens at the Faculty of Medicine. Uh, you can do cancer research, those kinds of things. But the next step after graduation won't be, be becoming a practicing doctor. It will be to become a researcher or a professor or maybe a researcher in a uh, maybe pharmaceutical company. So that's just something I wanted to mention quickly. Um, yeah, so today I think... Uh, I won't go into too much detail about like the uh, details of of uh, kind of the job hunting process, um, but I wanted to mention that of course we have a career su support center uh, which offers uh, like seminars and career fairs and opportunities and. Uh, um, information in English for international students. So if you scan this QR code, if you're curious to see, okay, what kind of events or possibilities they offer for international students, then you can uh, check this website and uh, you can see uh, everything they offer. They offer help with uh, like uh, preparing your CV and writing your like job application in Japanese. They offer help with preparing for interviews and uh, all sorts of information uh, uh, like uh, regarding how exactly the job hunting is done. Uh, so uh, yeah, like once you become a student at Nagoya University, you can rest assured that you will be supported and helped when it comes to looking for a job uh, in Japan, as well as looking for uh, opportunities uh, abroad. Good. So yeah, I, I won't go uh, too much into details about that. Uh, what I wanted to somehow kind of uh, emphasize today and highlight uh, is the importance of finding your passion. So uh, like in the modern world, maybe it's not enough anymore to just get an education, so to speak, like just having a degree uh, doesn't kind of stand you out from the crowd because quite uh, most people, for example, in Japan uh, go on to universities and have a university degree. So uh, it's really important to find your passion. And uh, I'm going to share a few co quotes from, uh, we had a career path seminar. So one of the events I was just explaining to you, we offer for the international students. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, let me share some of the quotes from here. So uh, this is uh, Professor Sin Sugiyama. He is uh, the project organizer for the Nagoya University English as a medium of instruction project. This is actually a program that hires a lot of students. So a lot of international students do this uh, project's work as a part-time job uh, and get some experience. I also uh, worked here when I was a student, uh, but uh, he has seen a lot of the international students uh, come through this project. And what he was saying is that the people who are really succeeding and getting interesting jobs and going along a path that they're really excited about are the people who have been able to find their passion. Uh, and what's important is to start early. So I think Hannah will talk to you about this topic a bit more, like how, how she found her passion and what she has been doing already uh, in the past few years, even though she's just a second year student. Um, uh, if you are if you are curious about uh, this NUMI program, uh, I'd put the QR code here. Uh, you can see what kind of career opportunities uh, they offer uh, for students. But I think this is really important. Like, it's it's somehow not enough uh, just to do your coursework and get good grades. You need to have 
more things in your CV before you graduate to show that you have been active during your student life. And uh, one of the examples uh, I wanted to share from, this is also from the Career Path Seminar, uh, is uh, of uh, uh, Theo. Uh, he's our fourth year Japan in Asia culture studies student. And uh, he has been really active on uh, pursuing different opportunities. So he says, uh, I have a freelance uh, business. I make videos. And doing videos was something I could do uh, since I was really into it when I was younger. And I wanted to build on those skills and keep using it while in Nagoya. So I've created some promotional videos for the university. Also, I started a podcast called Passion Project. Uh, it's given me a chance to meet people I would not be able to meet otherwise. So, uh, yeah. So Theo is uh, one of our really star students. He has worked for the admissions office also. And uh, like uh, he's a Japan in Asia culture studies student. So he's using his kind of education in history and culture and cinema to uh, create really interesting videos that are really catching people's attention. And also like he's using the education, like a lot of the courses we have is, are really discussion based. So he's using uh, the education he has uh, also uh, with his podcast uh, to kind of create interesting conversations and uh, meet interesting people. And uh, I think uh, like, uh, well, looking at when I've, I've been kind of watching uh, Theo doing his, his thing. So he's really active. He's doing one thing. And it seems to me that one doing one thing kind of always ends up uh, kind of sending him to a different path. So her, first he was doing just the videos. Then he thought, okay, what can I do uh, with the skill of making videos? Why don't I try making a podcast? It has become really uh, popular and there's a lot of demand for him. People are, are contacting him. Can I be on your podcast? Um, it's, a, it's a really... Uh, interesting podcast about kind of life in Japan and entrepreneurship. And uh, they uh, invite a lot of kind of successful startup people and different people like that to their uh, podcast. So uh, yeah, I think T Theo is a great kind of example of a person who has been able to find their passion and use it uh, to build a career. Uh, but if you're interested in hearing kind of uh, more stories of people, international people who are in Japan and have like exciting stories and uh, have been successful in building a career, then I also recommend you to check uh, check out Theo's podcast um, for kind of uh, more insight into some individual people's stories of uh, how to kind of make it in Japan. Good. Uh, but uh, next, I would like to give the stage to Hannah. Uh, she, I think, has also uh, somehow found her passion, hopefully. So, uh, Hannah, go ahead. Uh, please uh, uh, introduce us to your story. Okay, so thank you so much for the introduction. Um, yeah, Sorry. so can we go to the next slide? Sure. Okay, okay. So hello everyone. My name is Hannah and I'm currently a second year School of Agricultural Sciences G30 Biology International Program. And I'm currently also have the uh, the scholarship which is called MEX. And it's like given by the government of Japan to like sustain my life for like four years. And it was a pretty nice perk because um, as a student, I don't really have to think about financial kind of like um, challenges. So yeah, the money that they gave me is just sufficient for my life here in Japan. So yeah, I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia, and I'm, I graduated high school under the program called the International Bachelorette's Program, which is also known as IB. And I love a little bit about myself. I love art, music, nature, fictions, puzzles, pets, especially dogs, and of course, biology, because, and that's why I kind of like took the path of agricultural sciences. So yeah, before I want to share something that is more 
um, serious, I kind of want to tell you more about my daily activities as a student. So can we? Okay. So yeah, that's like a very short video of what I'm currently doing in labs. And it's uh, currently because I'm on my second year as uh, what Ilona Sang already told uh, you guys. I'm currently focusing on like student lab experiments. And we just started that this year. It was pretty fun because in Nagoya University, like um, especially BioAgri, you get to like experience all of the basic techniques that you need it. You might need later for your specialized courses. And currently we're just done with labs now. And other than being that kind of student, I'm also part of the international organization here in Nagoya University. And we are called Nagoya University International Students Organization, which is also shortened as NOFSA. Yeah, I know the, over the abbreviation is not related, but <laughs> that's what we call ourselves. And um, in this community, I'm happy to say that I kind of found my second home because uh, the people there is just various backgrounds, uh, various countries. You get to learn more about their culture about their languages even, and also like more about their working style and learn a lot about organizations. So yeah, that's part of the student life that I'm having. Other than that, as a student, international student here in Japan, of course, you have the perk of traveling around the Japan. And um, it was really nice because um, other than being the serious type of student, you get also to have a self-leisure, like relax a little bit. Because again, Japan is just an amazing tourism country. So man many food, amazing ones, and like a lot of sceneries too, which I really love. So however, I don't really want to stay as a student and like a um, regular studying student. So I always tell myself that I really wanted to explore a lot of things and of course that is also related a lot about my passion and one of that is art so current i've been working with a company in uh called creative indonesia and that's like the middle post that is in this slide right now so yeah that's a shirt company uh hoodies and we kind of like are developing a website so we're going to make like a international like marketplace for people to design their clothing and also like um, maybe sell and we're also like part of the designer kind of like side so other than that I also claim myself as a self-thought artist digital artist and traditional ones and because of that like it kind of like art is kind of like an escape for me to kind of uh, procrastinate on things sometimes but it is also something that I am really passionate about and same like Theo which is about video that's me for like digital art and illustrations and of course like although like a scholarship is enough um, this kind of like side incomes is just really self-rewarding and I also kind of like get the chance to like design some university sweater which is shown like in the bottom left so yeah, that's really like something that I kind of like to do on the sides and especially maybe in during breaks. So yeah, um, from these kind of like experiences that I've uh, been wanting to tell, I kind of want to share like how do I get these things and like um, what's like the importance of kind of like um, learning about yourself and also trying to find what you were kind of like passionate about which is also like one of the things that is like the main topics in this talk so yeah um can we go to the next slide so other than like having those experiences I kind of always say to myself that experiences is your portfolio and so other than education your skills are like important and like the skills that I'm mentioning here is more is not just something that is like, you know, that it's uh, your passion and something that hobby that you want to develop. It's more towards those life skills that you kind of learn along the way. And this kind of like skills can be something like um, 
learning in like teams and companies and then like trying to handle customers which like takes a lot of patience so that kind of like skills and that you cannot like just uh, get from being just a student that sits in a classroom is just something that is like valuable and of course I'm happy to say that since I came to Japan I've been learning these kind of things a lot connecting with my senpais and also like having job opportunities so last December I kind of want to share a little bit I had a job opportunity from Theo which is the senpai that um Ilona Sung already thought so he's a very nice senpai and I kind of he reached out to me like do you want something like graphic designing jobs and I don't know who's the client who's the um something that yeah he wanted to introduce me but he just asked me to send my portfolio and suddenly Adobe Atmos from Japan is recruiting me for my like graphic designing kind of Instagram skills so that kind of like connection is just really valuable and it's uh although it's very short it's like december to march this year um i was able to really learn a lot about adobe and like graphic designing in the level of like um those high brands that you kind of like know like in cinemas and that's just like something that i dream about working in like a cinema cinematic kind of like companies or maybe in academia which is still debating about it but yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's more towards your experiences. And like other than that, um, since my first year, second semester, I also got like another connection job, which is uh, English teaching. So being an international student here in Japan was really a benefit because you get to speak English when if you don't know, Japanese don't really speak English um, like there's like a lot of them that uh, still is struggling a lot about this kind of like skill. And so like uh, they English schools, they really prioritize having teachers that can interact with them in English. And it's like in a high demand. So everywhere you can like search a lot about these kind of jobs. And I got this job from my senpai too. And I got to teach like seven to eight year olds, 10 to 12, and even three to four year olds that's just running around the class. So it's really fun. It's uh, also like an eye-opening kind of job because I also get to practice my Japanese a lot. And yeah, other than that, experiences also can be uh, done through their competitions. And maybe like, I also love, love to like illustrate books. So that's like part of my works. I also have a lot of like experiences with orchestra because I play the violin, although not that much right now because it needs a lot of uh, time commitment. But yeah, I still do play because these skills is again, it's very important. So other after that long, very talk about me, I kind of like want to share something that I learned throughout the way. And the first point that I would like to share in regarding of like, what you want to do and kind of like being an international here in student here in Japan is first to know yourself. So can you go to the next slide? <laughs> okay, so yeah, the first one is to know yourself. And something that I kind of like love to um, ask about myself regarding um, what I want to do next in my free time is what do you enjoy in doing? So the first question here kind of like sound a bit cliche, but I kind of, uh, something that you want to face challenges on is something that you want to be passionate about. So it's not some, uh, I don't really recommend you kind of like diving yourself into something that you don't enjoy personally, because it can be mentally hard. And so I really do recommend that you kind of like know roughly what do you enjoy in doing? And if you don't know from yourself, you can ask your close friends, close knits, and kind of like ask them like, what do you think I'm good at? So these kind of skills is again, something that uh, doesn't need to be, oh yeah, uh, you have a very apparent hobby, which is like photography or art. Like it doesn't have to be like that. It can be as simple as communicating with someone or maybe like 
um leading a team or something that you kind of like enjoy searching something which is uh can also be started with you joining like a community and like nofsa helped me a lot in that kind of sense because it also helps me build my portfolio and the second thing that you would like to ask is about whether you're comfortable with people or kids or are you more to like towards like a person that is more towards backstage so you kind of want to hide and just sit in the couch or you want to like conveniently um, maybe you have to go work somewhere and just kind of like have that kind of time slot for you to work and deal with people so uh, this question arised when I was like um, debating about whether I want to teach kids for English teaching school but again like experiences you never know whether you enjoy it before you try it so I kind of like um, was debating whether I want to teach kids because they can be kind of like you know kids <laughs> and like um, it, they're pretty fun and I kind of like worried about my language barrier so uh, I just decided to try it out and turns out I kind of enjoyed it and I stayed there for one and a half years so it was really nice experience and you can definitely put that into your experience kind of profile later on when you're kind of like preparing your CV and the next question is again how much time are you willing to spend so although like being a student is a priority like educating yourself um when you're like in the university is the priority you really need to know uh, how much time are you willing to spend for the work or for the money and how much time you need to spend for your own studies so it needs to have that student life balance so for me um, because like I already have my scholarship support, I don't really need that kind of so a uh, big income. But then I kind of want to do it for myself. So I just will. I was like thinking that maybe it shouldn't be that long. Like a weekend should still be free because that's how I relax from the whole hectic week. So yeah, uh, when I was like part of the teaching English it's kind of like far so I decided to just do that on the evenings and like only two out six hours per week which is really manageable as a student so but then like for people who kind of like need and is able to balance though my friends they kind of like also work those restaurant jobs hotels which can like um, take a lot of your weekend time but they also earn a lot so it again depends on what balance you kind of like want to approach so the second point that I would like to share is more about getting connected so again I think it's already like emphasized a lot in this talk but um, getting connected is not just something that okay so hi my name is Hannah and what's your name and like we kind of talk, what are you good at? What are you not? So it's not something about that kind of like a very basic connection. It's more towards helping each other out and also like um, building that kind of like sense of, what do you call it? Solidarity. So it's more towards having uh, those supports that kind of like back you up whenever you need help. So a lot, a lot of my experiences they kind of like come from those connections with my senpais, Theo, and my other senpais that are in BioAgri. So it was really nice to have those kind of like support. And again, you can get this to through like Instagram. And like for me, I also use a lot like Discord to have like uh, to search on like jobs and like um, those that are kind of like based in Japan. There's also like a lot. So Discord community is quite like, um, if you don't know, it's kind of like quite prominent right now. And many people, they kind of like build communities inside that server. And so sometimes you just got to find one and um, just wait for the info and kind of like talk with one another. So no matter how introvert you are, try to get connected. And I also heard from my international student friend who is also in econs. Uh, for him, he kind of like do it through LinkedIn because this is where the platform is like recruiting English speakers. So again, in Japan, um, Shukatsu is a bit complicated and you kind of like 
need the Japanese level that is like there's a standard N1 or maybe N2 in, min in minimum. So sometimes international students just want to speak English and maybe like LinkedIn would be a better platform for you to kind of like search. And for me, like um, through like Instagram and Behance, Fever, Pinterest, they're just like also like something that I often use to kind of like look on uh, like jobs and this kind of like related to art but there's a lot of like photography video editing cooking and other services that you kind of like want to search on so definitely check them out if you're interested so yeah can we go to the next slide okay so sorry yeah so the next one is about internships so I kind of like want to touch on this but to be honest I don't really have them a lot of experience regarding this because I'm again still a second year, but I do have some research about it. And it is uh, currently the most platform that is mostly used from my friends is about Rikunabi, which is a part of like a website that helps you navigate like around uh, companies that are looking for employees. And it's very uh, useful because they kind of like really concentrate a lot of companies that are looking there and just you can just check whichever you want and and something about internships in Japan is that it is usually last one day to two weeks kind of like maximum and it's not something that you can spend your entire summer break or spring break on so in other countries that's the case but in Japan it turns out to be that short and it's about like a short chit chat, more towards like info session with the company and also some job trials. So it's not something that you can, okay, I will work there, kind of like try. It's not, it's something that you kind of like um, learn about the company and try to like see their uh, maybe environment and like their staff and also like their kind of like working system. So definitely uh, again, check on, more a lot about like these kind of stuff and something that is more specific towards like job hunting seminars. So um, another point, the last point of my talk would be, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, it would be something that is very important for international students. So when you come here in Japan, you would have this residence card, which is um, something that you need to keep and <laughs> randomly police just can, uh, can check on that because uh, that's how you kind of like show that you're an international student and you are eligible to be here in Japan. So yeah, definitely it's an important card. And other than that, uh, being something that is uh, important, this card, when you first arrive in Japan, you can also ask the immigration official, official to kind of like grant you a working permit which is um, part of like the passport control. So it's very easy. You can just like ask um, Baito kind of like uh, you want a working permit and they kind of like ask you several questions and just like stamp that. So with that stamp, uh, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, every time uh, comp like you kind of like want to in like part-time, do part-time jobs, the employers would have a take a look on this and they kind of like see some bosses, uh, they strictly care about this, but some don't really. But uh, they kind of like need to know that you're actually eligible to work, uh, your minimum age, and maybe like, yeah, those kind of like this grant is very easy and convenient if you have it directly once you land in Japan. So yeah, that is it from me. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> I will pass the baton back to Ilana Sung. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, thanks. That was a really uh, nice to hear about uh, your personal experience. Um, yeah, so it's nice to work when you're a student, but uh, you need to be a bit careful not to overwork yourself and uh, uh, like uh, become too exhausted. So I think Hannah has been able to kind of find a balance in her uh, kind of studying and working life. Uh, yeah, but uh, we have been talking already for one hour. Uh, I have a uh, one more kind of section for you guys, and then you can ask questions if you'd like. So uh, 
thanks again for Hannah. And uh, yeah, let's go to the uh, final section. So uh, step five is uh, I wanted to introduce some stories uh, from Nagoya University to kind of inspire you to kind of see, okay, what opportunities uh, I would have if I graduated from Nagoya University. So of course, uh, uh, this is a, a few slides about the general statistics. Uh, so there are of course many employment possibilities. You can see here like the career path of our alumni. Uh, quite many of them continue to graduate schools in Japan. Uh, also lately, uh, a big trend has been to uh, go to graduate schools outside of Japan, uh, very top ones. I will show you some examples soon. About 19% of uh, students uh, find uh, employment in Japan after the undergraduate program. So like one in uh, five students will, after undergraduate program, will directly continue to working in companies. But most students, because our programs are very research focused, will continue into graduate schools. And then, uh, of course, uh, some of our students, about 2%, uh, uh, they will uh, find employment outside of Japan, maybe in their own country. And then at the time of graduation, maybe uh, some students' uh, situation hasn't been completely decided yet, or they are taking a, a little bit of a break. But here you can see some employment possibilities, uh, big companies, Tesla, Honda, Toyota, the automotive engineering students are, are have good connections to these companies. Uh, Shiseido, this is a cosmetics company here in Japan, a Deutsche Bank, so a really wide variety of different types of uh, companies. Of course, you can be like me and hopefully uh, if you really love Nagoya University like me, then maybe you can stay here and work here too. So uh, yeah, as said, most, most of our students pursue advanced academic degrees after uh, the undergraduate degree. And uh, I'm not just talking about like any old university, I'm talking Stanford, Oxford, Harvard, uh, Duke, ETH Zurich in, uh, in Switzerland, University of Edinburgh, uh, Tokyo University, Nagoya University, of course, many of the students stay here. So uh, one of the kind of really special things about our program is how successful our students have been in ac academia. And this is like an ongoing trend and each year, more and more students are uh, getting uh, admitted with scholarships to these top universities. Uh, now, uh, let me just uh, share, uh, we are a bit over time, uh, but I wanted to share like a few actual stories of some of our graduates. Uh, I have three stories and after that, uh, you can ask some questions if you want. So the first story is the story of Gia. I think uh, she's also a good friend with Hannah. She's a current fourth year student uh, and she's a really exemplary uh, student who has kind of grabbed every single opportunity that she has had at Nagoya University and really uh, like uh, kind of uh, built a strong portfolio for herself even before graduating. So she's an economics student, uh, and, uh, but uh, after entering Nagoya University, she joined uh, NUFSA, which is another like student organization. So like this kind of networking is really important. And she also worked part-time for the uh, NUEMI project, which I mentioned uh, previously. Uh, then uh, she has kind of created opportunity for her herself. She's been kind of, Instagram health influencer. Uh, she was also ch chosen to be the Nagoya University Model United Nations Secretary General. Uh, she runs the podcast with Theo. And uh, after doing several internships, I think she has done at least three internships, uh, including one for the luxury brand LVMH, which is the brand that runs companies like Louis Vuitton. Um, after that, uh, she was able to secure a marketing position in a Japanese company, and she will enter that company in a few months in, in Tokyo. So, uh, yeah, 
I think she's a great example of somebody who, again, like takes one opportunity and turns it into another opportunity opportunity and she's really uh skilled at networking i think uh that has made her really successful um and she has done so many things like i couldn't even list in this slide um but yeah she's a great example of somebody um um uh, who is like taking full advantage of what we have uh, to offer here at nagoya university then another great story is the story of Bak Nien. Uh, he's from Vietnam. He uh, was a G30 chemistry science uh, program graduate. So uh, she graduated about maybe four years ago or three years ago. And uh, she he went on to do a PhD in Duke University. He's only 23, uh, or, I'm sorry, maybe 24, uh, but he was recently uh, awarded a uh, 67,000 uh, US dollar research grant for refining uh, an enzyme towards developing new antibiotics. So his example is a great example of uh, like, uh, like a science excellence uh, from Nagoya University. And finally, I wanted to share you a story, story of Sapna Sinha, so uh, he is also uh, one of our, uh, I think, chemistry engineering uh, graduates from Nagoya University. Their program is very strong at producing really high achieving uh, researchers. So after uh, Nagoya University, uh, she went on to Oxford University to do a PhD. And after that, to become the Smith Science Fellowship holder at MIT. And actually in between that, she was also a, a professor at Osaka University. So even though she's just 29 years old, she has been able to uh, achieve a lot in terms of research. And she was recently selected as one of the Forbes 30 under 30 in Asia, uh, uh, kind of in, in that listing. So uh, a very bright uh, student with the great future also ahead of her doing uh, this kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, brain science. What is it called? <laughs> um, yes. So uh, yeah, here you have a few examples of students uh, following their passion and finding jobs in companies as well as uh, uh, in academia. So I hope that inspires you. I hope that encourages you to consider uh, coming to Nagoya University. Um, that's it from me. Um, uh, do any of the students who are uh, present have any questions for us? If you have, you can just turn on your mic or raise your hand. Anything at all? Oh, so uh, Yu Chan uh, Don, go ahead. Uh, what's your question? Uh, I have a question to uh, Hannah Senpai. Uh, as a G a G thirty freshman this September, I, I too aspire to explore my passions that could not necessarily relate to my major. One thing I would like to question is that how did you keep the balance between your passion? that is alien to a major such as designing or any other form of art you mentioned before and your academic life. And do you expect yeah, you could keep such balance as uh, in your senior years as the study intensifies? Thank you so much for your question. I know your name because I saw in my high list, but yeah, don't call me Sampai yet. <laughs> I'm not used to that. So, um, yeah, so your question is how to balance between um, your passion and also your um, academics, right? So yes. for me, um, to be honest, like since I started my laboratory kind of like experiments, it is a class that requires you to kind of like stay from the, uh, in the lab from like one until around five each day and yeah during the week weekday and then your rest of the time is mostly on working on your reports and like kind of like um also studying for the other subjects which is kind of 
can be pretty overwhelming. But again, like something that you would like to try for you to balance things is try not to procrastinate as much as possible. Because um, for me, I kind of like do uh, homeworks every time the class ends, like so it's like directly. And I got to like remember everything that I learned during the class and also like do it directly. So it was really helpful for me in the sense that time management is just the key for it. And kind of like um, with that being done and like your reports kind of like while you do your labs, you kind of also like steal some time and do it like in the kind of like evenings every day. Those little progresses that you can like make each day is really helpful for you to give a free time for you. And I am also I'm glad to say that even with my lab experiments being kind of like hectic for now, I still get to like watch movies with my friends, kind of like something that is like growing passion, although it's not like something that is, okay, I'm going to start freelancing and search some jobs online. It's not something that's hectic. I still draw. And again, I'm also like part of the student organization, which is NOFSA. And they kind of like also allow me to design some stuff. So in that sense, I still help improve my social media skills. And yeah, something that is more towards balancing, I think the key is back to your time management. And uh, the next question is whether I can still balance once it intensifies. Well, um. From my senpais in BioAgri, they kind of like, once your lab experiment, like you've chosen like a lab to specialize on, sometimes they can be flexible in time. Sometimes they acquire to you, require you to kind of stay in also like a specific time slot. But um, when you enter labs, it's not as hectic as second year, which is like right now. So second year, third semester, second year until third year, you're mostly going to be hectic. And it, again, depends back on your major. But for me, bio, bio agri, it's mostly the most hectic right now. So I believe that once I reach my third year or fourth year, it's more towards like, again, time management. And of course, I feel like I would be able to do more of my passion if I were to focus on that. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And I think, yeah, not, it's really important to protect yourself from burnout and uh, try to balance your studies and, and working life and like try to kind of remember that the studying is your kind of first job uh, while you're a student here in Japan. Um, how about anybody else? Uh, do you guys have any questions uh, for me or to Hannah? Anything at all? You can just raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, so I think uh, today uh, maybe that's it for all the questions. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined and uh, uh, yeah, um, I, I did collect some uh, like uh, questions from the registration form. I think we are running a bit over time, so uh, maybe we can skip uh, these questions. Uh, a lot of the questions in the form were related to like general admissions or um, maybe graduate school or scholarships. Uh, those are questions that we get often. So before we uh, end today's uh, uh, seminar, then I would just like to uh, guide you uh, to our YouTube channel, Nagoya G30. You can find a lot of uh, these types of seminars there. So uh, for any questions about like general admissions process, you can find this introductory seminar of the Nagoya University International G30 program. Uh, uh, this seminar was held uh, last June. So uh, in this seminar, I will go over uh, like uh, a lot of the details of how to apply, when to apply, what's what's required, uh, what the campus is like and things like that. So for general kind of questions about the university, 
please check out this video. Uh, if you have questions about scholarships and uh, like financing your university studies in Japan, then uh, check out our scholarships and financing university studies in Japan uh, video. Um, it's one and a half hours. I go over uh, all sorts of details about different types of scholarships we offer and external scholarships, both for undergraduate and graduate programs. So uh, yeah, this is a good resource for that. Uh, then if you are interested uh, in more details about our graduate programs, then I recommend you to uh, check out this uh, uh, graduate school rolling admissions seminar held a few months ago. Uh, there I will explain uh, more about how to apply to our graduate programs and uh, what programs we have available. Good. So uh, for further information, uh, please check out our website. Uh, you will find most of your answers here. So uh, you are welcome to send us some questions. But before you do, please uh, first check out the website and see if you can find the information already there. Uh, so yeah, that's it from me. Uh, thanks so much for joining. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, um, check out the website or send us an email. Uh, we, of course, have Instagram page also where you can learn more about student life. So thanks, everybody. And thanks, Hannah. I think uh, 